So from a very young age, I wanted to, to be a scientist. And so at school, I did maths, physics, chemistry, A-levels. And then at university, I did a, a degree in physics. And then it just seemed very natural to then do a PhD um, in particle physics. Again, to me, that's the kind of physics that appealed to me. So um, it was just a really natural decision for me. And I didn't, didn't really give it a, a second thought. I learned a lot of physics uh, out of my PhD, um, but in hindsight, I learned a lot of other things. Um, gosh, I learned about developing stamina for big problems, uh, determination. Um, I was working as part of a, a very large team. Uh, so, so again, team working. Um, I, I, I learned about you know, how to motivate myself when I got kind of depressed at some times about how difficult things were. Um, I, I learned about, I learned French. <laughs> Part of my PhD involved living in, in Geneva for a couple of years. Um, you know, we were dealing with budgets, so I learned a bit about managing the finances of what I was doing. So there are a ton of skills that, that I learned during my PhD and that everybody learns during their PhD um, that go beyond the physics or the chemistry or the biology. I think you should only do a PhD if you genuinely, desperately want to do it. Um, if you're umming and ahhing about it, go do something else. You know, you, you know, this kind of age, whatever it is that you do, you should do it because you're passionate about it. Um, if you're passionate about doing a PhD, okay, then you need to find the right PhD with the right supervisor, doing the right sort of research. Um, but those are secondary. The first thing is, do you really want to spend three more years, maybe four more years of your life, actively involved with a particular bit of science that's going to be your, your be-all and end-all? I think when I, when I was doing my PhD, I was convinced that I would go on and do a postdoc, and then I would go on and on and on and on and be a scientist. Um, and for some people, that is, that is their best route. For me, about six months before I finished my PhD, I suppose when I was starting to write up, I could see other people who were brighter and quicker and sharper than me. And they were going to be the people who would become serious researchers. And I was probably going to be better off finding something else. So the challenge then was, um, what am I good at? What do I love doing? What have I learned during my PhD? What can I do that keeps me close to science? Because I still loved science. Um, and, uh, and what makes me a bit different? What can I do that other people can't do? Um, and so uh, I put all of those things together and so I moved from a PhD into working in television. I, I started making films for the BBC, first short films and then longer films. Um, and then I moved from television into writing and from writing into all sorts of other things. So I suppose my top tip would be that um, when, when you get towards the end of your PhD, Think about, do you really want to pursue this further? And if you do, fantastic, that's great. If you don't, think about all of the amazing things that you've learned and all of the other amazing opportunities that are out there because um, that, that decision that you'll make in your final year of, of writing up um, will, will be pivotal. And so, so just think about what you could do with the rest of your life.